Welcome to creating and sharing Mac color palettes. Thanks, grinning cat face with smiling eyes. To get started, I'll be using Keynote to show you how to use the Mac color picker. All right, so to access the color picker, I'm just going to put an image in. Let's say I'm making a nice presentation about one of my childhood heroes, Bob Ross. Move that back now. I want it to be yellow, so I need to bring up the color picker. So anywhere in the Mac you see this little colorful icon, that is how you bring up the color, color picker. The color picker has five main ways to choose colors and create color palettes. The first tab is the color wheel. The second is the color sliders. The third is color palettes. The fourth is image palettes. And lastly, you've got pencils. The color wheel allows you to fluidly select a color from this nice little colorful wheel here. You can adjust the brightness or darkness of the particular color with this slider. And you can even adjust the opacity of whatever object you have selected with this slider. One nifty thing about the color picker is that it includes an eyedropper that lets you choose a color from anything on your screen. You can also kind of plop little swatches over here into this color swatch drawer uh, for temporary use. You can put any amount in there. If you're a little bit anal and you want it to be back the way it was, just choose the background color and put a swatch on top of a previous swatch. Color sliders can be really handy when you want to pick a color in a little bit more of a technical fashion. So you've got the grayscale slider, which you can just slide up and down here or choose some predefined steps. You've got the RGB sliders, which allow you to adjust the red, green, and blue values in a color. You've got the CMYK sliders, which allow you to adjust cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. You have the HSB sliders, which will let you adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness. One thing I want to call out about the RGB sliders is that you get this handy uh, hex color input. This can be really nice if you're working with a developer and a designer together and you want to make sure that hex values are exact. Color palettes are one of the most useful parts of the matte color picker. You can select between kind of predefined groups of colors and you can even make your own uh, and share it with others which we'll get into in just a bit. Image palettes are kind of fun. They give you right off the bat a spectrum that lets you pick a color similar to the color wheel. However, you can also upload a file and choose a color right from an image. Pretty handy. Lastly, you've got the color pencil palette. Uh, it used to be crayons, which I thought was more fun, but I guess they decided the picker needed to grow up and turn into some Prisma colors. All right, now it's time for the fun part, which is creating our own color palette. So I'm gonna go over here in the color palette section and hit the little gear and then choose new. I'm going to rename this color palette to Reading Rainbow. And now I'm going to start picking some colors from this image. So once I've selected a color, I just hit the plus sign and then the color appears in my color palette. So I'm going to quickly add all the rest. All right, so now we can talk about editing our list. So you can just select a color and hit the minus sign if you want to delete it. And then if you want to rename things, just double click and name it whatever you want. You can also just really easily rearrange this list by clicking and dragging on them. So now that I have my reading rainbow list here and some colors added to it, you can see how easy it is to change the color of objects. Now let's say I wanna send my reading rainbow color palette to a friend. This is where things get a little tricky, but just follow along. So I'm going to uh, go to my desktop and go to the Go menu, and I'm gonna hold down Alt, and you're gonna get a special little thing that pops up called Library. When the library comes up, which is normally a hidden file, uh, you're gonna see a folder called Colors. When you select that, you can see the readingrainbow.clr file, or color file. 
this is the color palette file that you can share. So I'm just gonna copy this over to my desktop and now I can just email this to anyone I want and they can upload it to their color palette on their Mac. One quick note, uh, this image right here, the purple color preview icon is gonna look a little bit different on your computer most likely. I use an app called SIP, which lets me choose a color from anywhere on the screen and it kind of has these branded preview images uh, for dot color files. So that's one way to find your color, fi color files on the Mac. The other way is again to go to the Go menu and hit Go to Folder and then simply type in this path, uh, Library Colors and hit Go and it's going to kind of zip right to that place on your Mac and again you can find your .clr file there. Now let's say someone has shared a color file with you and you want to install it in your color picker. So let's bring back up the color picker and go to the color palette section. I'm going to click on the gear icon again and I'm going to click open. Now I have another color file, .clr file on my desktop. Uh, this is for the company I work at called Prolific Interactive and this is all of our colors for our brand. This is specifically why sharing color files can be really nice. It's really great for teams who need to make sure that everyone is using the same colors. One common thing I hear is that once people dismiss the color picker, uh, they don't really know how to find it again. So I'm going to show you how to find it in three common apps, Keynote, Numbers, and Mail. So in Keynote, again, anytime you select an image and you go to the Style tab, you're going to see the little color icon, and when you click that, the color picker comes up. If you're on the wrong tab, you won't be able to, to find what you're looking for, um, but for a text and style, you'll see the little color icon. So let's jump over to Numbers and do the same thing. So once I select, say, this uh, copy right here, I'm going to go over to Text, and there again you see the color icon. So I can click on that and get my prolific colors back in front of me. Lastly, we'll go over to mail. Let's say I'm sending an important email to the president and you know, I, sh I don't know, blue's maybe not doing it for me, so I wanna make sure I change it to a different one. I'm gonna hit this little color icon in mail. If you're not seeing that, uh, probably just need to click on the little A here. If you're not seeing the A, you can just customize your toolbar and throw the format up there. So once you've done that, you can click on show colors and there you have it. <laughs>